So let me then now, since we have a new person, do the introduction to the Instant Story Show. Um, I was giving a book signing one time with one of the artists who had done some of the illustrations for that book. And I was envious because this guy who was more introverted than me, and that takes some work, this guy just sat there and sketched in his sketch pad. And people in the bookstore all crowded around him to see what he was doing. He had a natural hook to draw people in. And I'm thinking, if I were sitting there typing at the keyboard, all they'd do would be ignore me. I'm that geek behind the table who's typing and not paying any attention to people. So I thought how unfair it was that these artists could draw and people wanted to see what they were doing. And I thought, that just doesn't work for writers. And then I remembered, except for one case, um, older fans are familiar with stories of Harlan Ellison and his bookstore stories. Harlan Ellison used to go down to his favorite bookstore in Hollywood to sort of help them draw customers in. He'd announce that he was going to the bookstore. He would go into the front window of the bookstore. He'd talk to the fans that had shown up to see him at work and have them throw him out an idea. And he would sit in the window of that bookstore and he would type on his old manual typewriter, he would type out that story, the idea they'd thrown out at him and pull the pages out and take them to the window so people could go outside and read the story as he was typing it. So apparently you can pull this trick off if you're somebody famous like Harlan Ellison. But if you're me, a nobody sitting in a bookstore typing isn't going to work. But then I remembered, I don't type my stories anymore. I actually dictate all of my stories with a high-end microphone and a voice recorder. I dictate all of my stories. Somebody's sending me messages that I can ignore that now that I know who it is. It's nobody, nobody in trouble. It's just family just gabbing. So I dictate all of my stories into this voice recorder and then transcribe them with transcription software. And suddenly I thought, you know, dictating a story is like a performance. That's something you can do in front of a crowd. That's something that people can actually see that I'm creating and watch the creative process and hopefully enjoy the process especially if sometimes I manage to trip over myself in the process. And so then I started doing this instant story show. I've done it at a few conventions now, and now this will be my third time doing it online. So I need to first make sure my recorder is working because when I'm all done, assuming I finished the story, so far we're 50-50 in terms of these online sessions. The first time we did it, Man, the idea they came up with was at least a two or a three hour story and I didn't have the voice to talk for two or three hours. Last time, I managed to just pull it in into the hour mark so I was able to take it when I'm done, take it and transcribe it and turn it into an ebook. So we'll try that, but I can't guarantee I'm going to succeed at it. It depends on the idea because I don't know what the idea is going to be. You're going to be telling me that. But first, I want to actually test my voice recorder to make sure that it's recording, test, 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 test. It's recording, test, 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 test. It's very important that I make that test because I have had the unfortunate experience of recording an hour of absolutely genius work and I get to transcribe it and I've got nothing but junk, no junk and noise. So I always have to test before I start recording. So questions before we get started. All right, this is then where the audience participation part comes in. Let me get my recorder started. And now, because it's only two of you, I'm gonna need extra participation. Right, well, I'm gonna to have to be pretty quiet only two tonight. Because it's only two of you, your odds of getting a free book are really high tonight. One of the two of you is getting a free book when we're done. All right. So I'm going to need three things volunteered from the audience. First, 
I need a job or a profession or an assignment or a duty, a responsibility, something that a person has to accomplish. A job, a scientist. Scientist, okay. Ooh. And then I need a setting where this scientist is working. Space lab. Space lab. Zero gravity. Yep. That's like my second home. <laughs> and then third. Hmm? And then third, I need an initial problem for this scientist to be tackling. It's not necessarily the problem of the whole story, but it's something that, that they're involved with at the start that is causing complications. Hmm. Difficult one. I'm listening. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, try this space lab. I'm trying to think. Uh, oh, it's just something simple like growing certain plants under space conditions. Or, yep, the plants like to have gravity because they go roots go down and the plant goes up. There's a name for it, but geo, yes. geo mycin, something like that. Yeah. That's the problem. All right. So we have a scientist in zero G space lab and the plants need gravity to grow. And this is going to get me started. So <clears throat> a couple of other things that I forgot to mention. We'll see if we need them. So far I've gotten away with not needing them. But there is the situation where I might get stalled. And if you think I'm stalled, feel free to say so. If it sounds to you like I'm just running in place and not going anywhere, or if I'm flum, 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 flumming, tell me I'm stalled. If I agree, because I might have a plan in mind, and I might know that I'm not stalled, but I'm getting there. But if I agree, I turn over the sand timer, and I now have 30 seconds to get unstuck. And if I don't get unstuck before that sand runs out, then I go to my wonderful instant story show deck of cards, and I pull up a card that says a surprising legacy. Are those backwards or forwards for you? It's forwards, forwards for me. Yeah. Okay, it's backwards for me, so they're, they're showing it to me like a mirror. So... That is all of a sudden my prompt to get me kicked off from the spot where I'm stuck. Okay, a surprising legacy. I have no idea what a surprising legacy has to do with this space lab and these plants, but that's my job now is to pull that in. So if you see me getting stuck, it might happen. This one's an odd one. But if you see me getting stuck, just go ahead and say, hey, you're stalled. All right. So, Patrick Stevens frowned at Maureen, the tech. What do you mean the centrifuge is down for two hours? Question mark, he said. If I speak my punctuation, is that going to freak you out? Is that going to be too hard for you to hear, comma, if I do things like say this question mark? Or are you okay with that question mark? Okay. Yes, yeah, okay. If I remember, because I don't always remember, but if I remember to speak the punctuation, comma, the transcription will be much more accurate, period. The Dragon fifth, Naturally Speaking 15 transcription software will try to interpolate punctuation, dot, 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 emphasis on try, dot, dot, dot but it always does better if I actually speak it, period. So I'm going to try to remember to speak it, comma, but when I get excited, comma, I sometimes forget, period. New line. 
What do you mean the centrifuge is going to be down for two hours? Question mark. New line. Marine shook her head, period. I don't know what happened to these bearings, comma, but something got into them, period. Did you spill something? Question mark. New line. Patrick shook his head, period. I'm not aware of anything, comma, but there were some uh, levels wrong in the um, in the hydroponics bath, period. Someone must have spilled something, comma, because those tanks were down a good three milliliters from where I expected them to be, period. But three milliliters couldn't have had any effect on this equipment, comma, could it? Question mark, new line. Marine's eyes opened wide, period. Three milliliters, exclamation point. If all of them got into the bearings, Comma, do you have any idea what that would do, question mark? Do you know how precise this equipment has to be to maintain that rate of, of revolution in these conditions and not ever have a hitch, question mark? New line. Patrick shook his head, period. I, dot, dot, dot. I work with plants, dot, dot, dot. I work with liquids and nutrients and I work with harvesting that 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 I can tell you a little bit about maintaining the harvesting equipment comma but I'm not really that good when it comes to the physical space hardware period that's not part of what they trained me on period marine shook her head period back in my day dot 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 marine was old space comma as they said in the business period Patrick was new space, period. Marine came from the old days of national space programs when everyone cross-trained for their different jobs, period. Where a pilot might be a programmer, might be a doctor, period. Where a hydroponicist might be an equipment technician, might be a communications officer, period. This was old space's way to, make, to handle things if ever there were a crisis and someone were injured or lost, period. You always had someone cross-train for their job, period. New line. The new space philosophy said that was highly inefficient, comma, and it was cheaper to ship up more experts than fewer experts and try to cross-train them into experts in other areas, period. New line. Patrick couldn't really complain about this, comma, because if it weren't for that philosophy, comma, he might never have qualified for this mission, period. And he really was happy to have qualified for this mission, period. It was getting harder and harder to make productive research in the modern publisher parish world, period. The idea that you could manage to produce new, unique research in the areas of botany that had been so fully plumbed by the genetic engineers and the hydroponics engineers and all of the people in life sciences, that, 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 well, comma, it was becoming just about impossible, period. But space biology, dot, 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 now there was a new field with lots of papers yet to be written, period. There was a chance where a young researcher could make his mark and manage to find himself a cushy job when he got back to Earth, period. New line. If he got back to Earth, period. Right now, comma, it was looking less likely, period because these weren't just any plants, comma, these were the BLSS, period. The bioregenerative life, bioregenerative life support system, period. We'll see how Dragon does with transcribing that, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> these were part of the plants which actually kept the entire station alive, period. They weren't just experiments, comma, they were life itself, period. Now, a couple of hours of the equipment being down, that, 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 would that be vital to life support? Question mark. No, comma, but the balance in this BLSS system was surprisingly delicate, period. Any failure in the system could potentially lead to a cascade into other parts, period. And a cascade was the worst possible thing that could happen in a BLSS system, period. Everything had to work in concert. 
all the different plants, all the different microorganisms, all the different insects, everything had to be managed in such a way that it produced an actual natural ecology, period. Not these so-called natural ecologies of the old days of the biosphere systems, comma, which had never really been BLSS, period. The, the nature of ecosystems had not been understood well enough back in those days to be able to really produce a self-sufficient, self-sustaining, bioregenerative system, period. But now, comma, after decades of experiments and research, comma, they had a laboratory which entirely ran on the wastes and the expiration of the crew plus the BLSS system, period. And it was Patrick's job, comma, his primary job, more important than his research, comma, to keep the BLSS up and running, period. New line. Well, don't you have replacement parts, question mark, he asked. New line. Maureen shook her head, period. You almost sound like old space when you ask that, period. New space doesn't believe in replacement parts, period. We can 3D print anything we need, comma, can't we, question mark? That's what they always tell me when I ask for inventory, period. We can send you up stock, period. That's all we really need, period. New line. She looked ready to throw the bearing assembly across the chamber, semicolon. But she knew better than to do that, comma. That was sure, period. Even Patrick, comma, as new as he was, comma, understood that tossing an equip piece of equipment like that would toss her clear across the other side of the chamber, period. She continued to fume, period. So no, we don't have replacement parts for this. We should have, period. It's in the inventory that we should have, period. Because these bearings are not something you can do on a 3D printer, period. The precision of these bearings is something that can only be done in a microgravity lab, period. These were done in the microgravity lab at the L5 station, comma, and that's the only place we can get them from, period. And I've put in my regular requests for replacement parts for the critical components, semicolon, but some bean counter has said, we don't need to replace these yet, comma, they're doing well enough on their life cycle, period. They're not anywhere close to end of life yet, period. She sighed, period. They do this so much, comma, it was only a matter of time before it burned us, period. Only a matter of time before somebody, dot, 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 she glared at Patrick, dot, 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 managed to ruin one far ahead of maintenance schedule, period, new line. Patrick held up his hands in defense, comma, unwittingly tossing himself backwards away from her, period. It wasn't me, period. I swear, comma, it was one of the other shifts, period, new line. Marine glared even more intently, period. I wasn't blaming you, period. We don't have time for blame, comma. We have to fix this, period. How bad is it if you get this centrifuge down for two hours, period? I, new line. I, dot, dot, dot. Patrick looked at his comp on his wrist, period. I, dot, dot, dot. Two hours means we're going to have some failure in the growth pattern, comma, not likely enough to cause an issue. It could put us behind some schedule, period. I think I can make up with it manually through manual feeding, period. New line. Well, you're going to have to, comma, Maureen said, period, because two hours is the best I can do for jury rig bearings, period. And the replacement bearings that we really need, that, 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 she checked her own comp, period. We're looking at six days transit at minimum, period. New line. Patrick's mouth dropped, period. Six days, that, that, that. 
that would be an utter disaster period. That would put the entire BLSS into a catastrophic shock period. It was no longer a case of hypothetical cascade failures period. That would be a case of people are going to start having to conserve air and water and even potentially food because the whole system would have to be suspended, period. Individual organisms would have to be carefully put into isolation and preserved and prepared for hopefully a safe, proper restart farther down the road, period. Captain Flynn would have a cow at that. New line. All right, comma, Patrick said, period. Do what you can, period. In the meantime, comma, I'm going to have to go through my stocks and find the proper treatments for these organisms to keep them all in balance during the two hour wait, period, new line. Leaving Marine to her work, comma, Patrick went off to his inventory closet, comma, pushing himself gently away from the hydroponics centrifuges and over to the wall of the chamber, period. Once there, comma, he caught himself and grabbed one of the hand grips and pulled himself along to the door into the inventory chamber, period. He opened the small closet, comma, and slid himself halfway in, period. It was all the farther he could fit with everything that was packed in there, period. In regular gravity, comma, it'd be an untenable situation, semicolon. But here, comma, floating in space and working in three dimensions through all the different cabinets and cupboards was easy, period. New line. Then he saw the bottle floating free from one of the cupboards, comma, and realized that easy was never something you should say in microgravity, period. Someone had left that bottle unattached, comma, and when he had opened the cupboard, comma, it had slipped out, period. He reached for it, and reaching caused himself to pull backwards as the center of mass shifted, period. He remembered to grab the edge of the wall or edge of the, of the door just in time to stop himself and pull himself back in just in time to miss the bottle, period. It bounced against the far wall of the chamber, comma, and the top came off, period. New line. He didn't scratch his head, comma, although that was his first instinct, comma, because that would involve letting go of his hold on the door, period. But he cursed under his breath, period. Now the precious nutrient fluid was leaking all out across the chamber, mm -hmm. comma, and getting into who knew what, period. He had to think quickly, period. That much had not changed from old space to new space, period. At least they drilled and drilled and drilled within their specialties, period. They weren't as good maybe as classic old space astronauts who could react immediately and correctly in every situation, semicolon. But within their specialty, comma, Patrick wasted no time pulling out an absorbent cloth and proceeding to dab up the droplets in the air and off the surfaces, period. He managed to soak up as much as he could see, comma, and dab it all, the entire absorbent material, into the bottle period. That left a residue behind, comma, so he took another absorbent towel and wiped up the residue, period. Now he had the nutrients he needed, comma, but not in the form that he needed, period. They were soaked into the absorbent material, comma, and they would have to be filtered out, period. And normally, comma, where did you fil do such filtration, question mark? New line. In the centrifuge, period. New line. So that wasn't going to work, period. There was no way to get the material out and properly filtered 
in the in the mechanical way that was supposed to be the method, period. So he would have to fall back on another approach, period. Again, at least within his training, period. So he went over to the sample vacuum chamber, period. He knew that under low enough partial pressure, comma, this nutrient liquid would vaporize, period. And he could, using the Waldos on the, or the, the glove box in the vacuum chamber, he could manage to work with these uh, with the towels and wring them out and wring them out in the vacuum pressure so that the material would all be squeezed out, vaporized, and then he would just have to slowly bring it back down to temperature and do what? Dot, dot, dot. Soak it up into the, into the cloth again, question mark? That put him where he was. That didn't help him at all, period. Now, comma, he needed a way without gravity to get it back into, back into, dot, 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 back into, dot, 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 new line. Patrick couldn't see a way, period. Once it was in the vacuum box, comma, he saw no way lacking gravity to get it out unless that, that, that new line. Then he remembered the lab, period. There was a sample analysis lab, comma, and that, that, that. He carefully put the bottle into the vacuum box, comma, sealed the box, comma, and floated away, period. Then he pushed off in the direction of the sample lab, comma, and pulled himself through the door of that, period. Inside, there was a small centrifuge, comma, too small to do him any good, and a microscope and other small equipment, comma, and that, 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 yes, period, eyedroppers, pipettes, all the materials of small chemistry, all the glassware for small chemical work. It would take time, but he could manage to siphon up all of the materials and get it back into the bottle that way, period. New line. He shook his head, comma, but at least he had a plan, period. It would take longer, thanks to the mistakes of himself and others, comma, but he had a plan, period. New line. New line. It was nearly 80 minutes by the time this plan was executed, period, and five minutes working it out, period. 85 minutes, they were practically to the two-hour point already, period. If damage had been done to the ecosystem at all, comma, it had probably been done by now, period, but it might be getting worse by the moment, period. So Patrick, comma, now with his bottle, with the dispenser at the top, proceeded back to look at <clears throat> the frozen hydroponic systems that should have been in motion, should have been keeping the plants carefully at a proper 0.3 G so that the nutrients would all settle to the proper level and so the plants would feel proper, proper gravity pulling one way so they would grow the other because it was all a necessary part of their growth potential. And he looked carefully, comma, and saw no particular signs of any danger yet, period. The nutrient that he had would artificially stimulate the proper growth for a while, period. It would keep the cells properly toned for their growth and keep them going long enough for Marine to get the system back up running, period. New line. So he went plant by plant, examining each through a microscope or through a magnifying lens, looking for signs of any damage or any stress areas, period. The AI built into the magnifying glass highlighted points that looked particularly stressed, comma, and he applied nutrient material there and when all of the stressed cells had been properly treated, 
Then he injected the remaining of the nutrient into the nutrient baths for each of the, each of the different potting cells, period. The baths were sealed off, comma, but each had a access, um, access valve to allow him to in inject additional material, period. New line. And just as he was finishing the last of them, comma, Maureen smiled and pushed a button, comma, and the motor of the centrifuge started to hum, period. I'll have to put it through some testing, comma, she said, period. But it should be ready to run inside of 20 minutes if all the tests pass, period. New line. Patrick smiled, period. I'm glad, period. This could have been worse, period. New line. Maureen shook her head, period. It still can be, comma, remember, period. What I've done is only temporary, period. We need to get those new uh, bearings in, comma, or this could be down for a long time, period. New line, new line. It took three hours to get an appointment with Captain Flynn, period. The station had so many personnel with so many different concerns, comma, each of whom considered their concern to be vital to the safety of the ship or the station, comma, or vital to the financial success, comma, vital to the human race, comma, vital to the scientific advance, that, 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 vital somehow, period. Everyone thought they needed his time, period. New line. As opposed to Patrick, comma, who really did, period. New line. But finally, comma, Captain Flynn floated out into the waiting area of his office, comma, and saw Maureen and Patrick, comma, and gestured them in, period. He pulled himself back into his office, period. When Patrick followed, comma, he found a mooring hook in the wall near the door, comma, and he pulled himself over to that one, comma, out of the way so that Marine could follow, period. Each of them moored to their hooks, comma, while Captain Flynn were his, period. By unspoken convention, comma, they all sat such that the door of the room was the floor as they perceived it, period. This was something that they had not, new space or old space, managed to shake out of humanity, period. When it came time for meetings, comma, people felt more comfortable if they all had a common orientation, period. New line. At first, comma, Maureen explained the bearings needing replacement, comma, and Captain Flynn stroked his chin as he listened, period. Then he asked the, point, uh, the pertinent question, colon, how did they go bad, question mark. What's the maintenance schedule say, question mark. New line. So then Patrick had to explain the missing three milliliters of fluid, comma, and Maureen had to explain how that missing three milliliters could cause this problem, comma, and therefore explain that this is what's going wrong that we have to deal with, period. Marine, comma, unfortunately, comma, could not stop from adding a dig about the bean counters not providing her with the extra inventory as she'd asked for in the first place, period. Patrick shook his head at that, comma, trying not to look at either one of them, period. This was not the way to get on Captain Flynn's good side, period. He was no more fond of the bean counters than anyone, comma, but he was the company's representative, period. He was the one held responsible for the economic management of the station, period. If the station went bankrupt, comma, and someone else took it over, comma, he was going to be the one who ended up taking the heat for it, period. Patrick knew from past experience that Captain Flynn was no happier about these shortages than anyone else was, comma, but it only irritated him to point them out, period. So he was not surprised when Flynn said, comma, well, comma, find a way to do without, period. We'll get you the materials as fast as we can, comma, but don't bother me with trivial matters until then, period. 
find a way to keep things running, period. New line. Despite himself, comma, Patrick said, comma, but this is life support, exclamation point. New line. Flynn glared at Patrick, period. Yes, comma, and it needs to keep running, comma, and that's your job, period. Mr. Stevens, comma, I will get you those bearings, comma, but there are other shipments that are just as vital. There are timing situations going on that you're unaware of, period. There are launch windows. There are, pardon me, phone's coming in. Political call. There are launch windows. There are concerns that you don't understand because you are not trained in orbital mechanics and launch systems, period. New line. Patrick winced, comma, and couldn't stop Marine before she said, comma, yes, comma, like he would be if we cross-trained, period. It only went downhill from there, period. New line. New line. Back in hydroponics, comma, Patrick was examining each of the uh, each of the plants to see if there had been any permanent stress on them from their time spent in microgravity, period. Once upon a time, comma, this would not have been an issue, period. Plenty of labs had grown organisms in microgravity before, period. It had been part of the experimental development of the early space race, period. New line. But that was different, period. That was when we were still learning what worked, comma, and what didn't, period. These were production plants in a bioregenerative life support system, period. These were plants chosen specifically, bioengineered even, for these roles, period. These were plants that were extremely well adapted for their role in a BLSS, dot, dot, dot. And as tended to happen with hyperadaptation, comma, really well adapted for this situation is really poorly adapted for anything outside of that situation, period. New line. And Patrick could see signs of it, period. All of the plants in that hydroponic unit were showing signs of stress and imminent fail, period. He could get them through, nurse them through this situation, comma, and probably get them through this generation, period. The next generation from their offspring would probably be just fine, period. But these plants could not take another stress, period. That much was absolutely clear, period. If the system failed again, comma, this entire bank was out, period. And this was a critical bank, period. If this bank fell out, that, 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 well, a cascade failure would be the least of their problems, period. It would be catastrophic, period. So many other systems in the BLSS depended on nutrients produced by these plants, period. New line. So Patrick buried himself into his books, comma, looking for obscure information on how to treat this sort of stress, period. He put out calls to all three shifts, comma, carefully not mentioning that someone had spilled something to cause this problem, period. Patrick was learning the hard way that trying to cast blame was a good way to cause the situation to fall apart, period. Blame would come in reports filed months from now, period. For now, comma, he needed his entire team on the task of getting these plants healthy, period, new line. When he had a strategy, comma, first he recorded all of the uh, assignments that would be needed, comma, and then he called his team in to the conference bubble to explain to them what their new schedules were going to be, period. He floated into the conference bubble in time to see all four of them taking their places in mounting hooks around the walls, period. He took the center hook so that everyone would be able to see him as he presented the information, excuse me, which was displayed on a, the far wall of the bubble, period. New line. Immediately there was grumbling, period. 
he had doubled the assignments, du doubled the staffing for all shifts, period. Suddenly the five of them were going to be doing the work of 10, period. But there was no way around it, period. For the next six days, comma, he explained, comma, we are going to have to be on high alertness as we look for any problems in these plants and get on top of it as soon as it's seen, period. If we see any sign of stress in any plant, comma, we need to immediately go into therapy mode, period. <coughs> Excuse me. It's not coronavirus, it's dry throat. We need to immediately go into therapy mode to get those plants, um, get them healthy again, period. We need to have anybody who's not on duty or asleep, dot, dot, dot. And you look, I've changed your sleep schedules too, dot, dot, dot. Anyone who's not on duty or asleep needs to be researching everything we know about these plants, not just as they're used, comma, but as their ancestor strains have been used. Figure out anything we can do to keep them healthy and keep them producing additional nutrients, additional oxygen, so that if one fails, comma, others in the system can be relied upon to make up the slack, period. New line. What slack, Rita asked. These things are so tightly engineered, there is no slack, period. New line. Kevin nodded, comma, bouncing up and down in his uh, in mooring hook as he did, period. I understand that there's no slack, period. It's time for us to find some, period. You are all trained botanists, comma, trained eco ecologists, period. It's time for you to figure out the limits that these plants can handle so that we can understand what our reserve is, period, new line. But why do we need reserve, question mark, Rita asked, period, new line. Because we should have had some all along, comma, Patrick answered, period. We should have been prepared for this, period. This is on me, period. The rest of you have work to do, comma, I'm the one who should have been planning for this all along, period. I hadn't realized exactly how dependent we were on mechanical systems that we didn't understand the vulnerabilities in, that we didn't understand the failure modes of, period. I failed in that, period. And now I'm going to work on correcting that, comma, and we're going to work on correcting that, period, because I'm going to need all of you to understand this too, because I can't be the only one thinking about this, period. I'm relying on all of you to be thinking just as hard as me, period. You're going to work hard. You're going to think hard. You're going to sleep hard when you can and get right back to it, period. New line. As they floated out of the bubble, comma, Patrick wondered how convincing he'd been, period. He had never in his life been in charge of a team with this much responsibility in this sort of a situation before, period. He took his entire characterization in the meeting from old videos, period. He had tried to sound like a drill sergeant, period. He hoped he'd been effective, dot, dot, dot. New line, new line. Hello, Andy, good to see you. New hey, line. glad to be here. I messed up time zones. That's why I was late. <laughs> I understand. Oh, man, speaking of messed up time zones, wow, it's been a while. Of course, we got a little bit of a late start, but I'm looking, it's like, it's, it's 10 to 8, and they're still dealing with the first problem. Well, I guess we're on the second problem. Through the next two days, comma, Patrick was surprised by his team and very pleased, period. They were living, coming, rising up to this challenge, comma, handling the increased workload and filling his inbox with reports, period. Old files pulled up from research on earth, period. Studies of the uh, metabolism of the plants, period. The team was really producing a mountain of information, period. New line. 
a mountain too big for Patrick to handle, period, new line. So once again, he had to change assignments, period. This frustrated the team as they were just starting to get into a new, new routine, comma, but this was more than he could handle, period. Patrick was pretty good in his job, comma, but now they were in a realm where they needed a theoretician, period. And that was more Rita's specialty, period. She came out of a genetic engineering and an evolutionary background, period. So he pulled Rita in to pour through the research with him, comma, and they could then argue back and forth on possible implications, period, new line. And arguing was important, period, because despite the team's best efforts, comma, the plants were showing increasing strain from their brief time in microgravity, period, new line. This makes no sense, comma, Rita said, period. We've seen plenty of plants survive for months in microgravity, period, new line. I know it makes no sense, comma, Patrick answered, comma, except it has to make sense, period. It's happening, period. It's real, period. Something in their biology, comma, in their genetics, comma, has led them to this situation, period, where a mere two hours of microgravity caused such a widespread failure to their system, period, new line. Rita scratched her head, period. That's that, that, that nonsense, period. Yes, there are issues in terms of the growth patterns, comma, but we've looked at those, comma, we've measured those, comma. We have managed to account for all of those factors, period, new line. Then what's the factor we didn't account for, question mark, Patrick asked, period, new line. That's what I'm saying. Colon, there isn't any, period. We've studied everything there is to know about growth patterns of plants in microgravity and in induced gravity, period. New line. Patrick paused and thought, period. Then what about other behavior in microgravity? Question mark. New line. Other behavior? Question mark. New line. We've been concentrating on growth patterns because that's the most common concern people have when they discuss these plants in their, in their microgravity environment, period. But, but growth is only one part of a metabolism of an organism, period. There are so many other parts, period. What about some of those, period? New line. Read a pause, period. Like dot, 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 nutrient transfer, question mark like that, 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 uh, waste disposal, question mark, new line. Exactly, Patrick said, period. Maybe that's what we were looking at, period. Something in the transport mechanism, something in, in the waste disposal, period. Something else in the normal metabolism of plant cells was disrupted by that brief period of microgravity, period something that maybe never got disrupted before on plants that weren't hyper-adapted, comma, but something which is a serious problem for these, period, new line. Well, comma, Rita said, comma, for that we can take lots more new studies, period, new line, new line. It took only another shift for their answers to come back, period. As soon as she'd had the chance, comma, Rita had stumbled upon the basic concepts, period. The two most fundamental elements of metabolism, colon, nutrient intake, waste outtake. Those two are essential to everything else an organism does, period. And those two, in these hyper-adapted organisms, had completely failed in the brief period of microgravity, period. Now that the cuckoo clock is done, dot, dot, dot. Had completely failed in the microgravity, period. Nutrient channels through the cell walls 
had collapsed, period. Not all of them, comma, but some, period. Some had not been properly maintained through the period of microgravity when the plant's growth pattern was disrupted, comma, it affected these as well, period. Now they had a plan, comma, a way to try to treat these, period. It would require very careful nutrient balancing to try to regenerate the, the material of the cell walls itself in a way that would be, would, would allow the plants to heal themselves, period. New line. Which was a really good plan, comma, right until the centrifuge failed again, period. New line. And that's actually got us to our eight o'clock time period, which looks like a good midpoint for the story. So let's take a pause here and let me Let me get some liquid here and the oldest dry throat, period. I don't think I was stumbling anywhere in there. There were a few places where I wasn't sure where I was going, but I kept going. And I have no idea where it's going yet. Um, <laughs> I, I definitely haven't seen an end point yet, but I've seen a really rich world. I've built a pretty good world as I go along here that all sorts of things I had no idea when I started. A Andy, just to let you know what the starting premise was, a scientist in a space lab in zero gravity and plants that need gravity to grow. Oh, and from there, yeah, that makes sense. No, yeah, I, I almost, yeah. Could, have, I almost could, could have guessed that probably actually, given what I heard. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's good. I, um, <laughs> I, I basically had these, have them on a big centrifuge to give them one third artificial gravity to stimulate the growth and the centrifuge failing due to improper maintenance and a cascade of failures going on from there. And I'm making up a whole lot of this as I go along because my knowledge of biology and botany is about like that. But curiously enough, if I were to share my screen with you, actually, I, it's not on my computer. It's, um, it's on my phone. Let me open up one of the tabs that's on my browser right now. Can you read it? Mm, let me try my bigger screen. Uh, Bioregenerative life support system and then small stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I just get lucky with the timing. I've been researching exactly that for a story that I'm working on. So I didn't just invent this buzzword when you threw the idea at me. I already had the idea ready to go. This is, in fact, one of the sort of secrets of improvisation, which I've been studying a lot, both as part of this, but I've also been taking improv acting classes. One of the secrets of it is take whatever the universe offers you. If the universe happens to offer you something that, that fits well with what you're going, run with it. Just assume that it's a gift from the universe, and this is your story. Had I not been studying that, I might have gone off in a very different direction. But since I had that ready to go, run with it. So, questions? How much of this have you right. done? Uh, this will be the third one that I have done uh, online during the during the shutdown. I've done two more um, online that I've done just for practice while I was driving, and I can only find the recording for one of those. I've also done it at a couple of conventions um, that where I had the idea originally. Uh, let's see, four conventions, five conventions I've done it at so far, and I'd like to do more, which is part of why I like to keep in practice, and you folks are giving me an audience so I can keep in practice because I think it's a really fun presentation at a convention to be able to just spontaneously, bam, here's a story. I had no idea what it was going to be because you, you gave me the starting points. Um, when I've done it at the conventions in Dallas, it's been even better because when I've done it at Dallas twice now, uh, I've had my friend Dan Cherry there with me. 
And Dancel is, besides being a great writer herself, and besides being a mother and a Pilates instructor, she's also an amazing dancer, particularly interpretive dance. So when we do this together, as I'm literally making the story up out of my head as I go, she's doing an interpretive dance for us <laughs> at the same time. Excellent. And, and one of those is recorded on my web page. If you go to shoemaker.space, there's an instant story show tab there where she, where, where I'm telling the story of a guy, basically a lighthouse keeper at a black hole and he's all alone and he's got to maintain the trash disposal system of stuff being dumped into this black hole to generate energy. Huh. And he starts talking about the mathematics of the black hole and everything. And all of a sudden, Dancel starts doing her black hole swirling dance. And she's <laughs> material swirling around and around and around the black hole until she falls flat on the ground. And I lost it. I just completely broke up at that point. <laughs> because <laughs> she, she is as good of an improviser for the dance as I can ever be for the, for the words. Um, because in some sense for both of us, it's, it's not about, how do I explain it? It's about having a repertoire of things you can do. Like, like I'm a fencer. I'm a really bad fencer, but I've learned that the stages of learning for fencing are also for lots of other things, other sports and so on. I call it the how, when, why. First, you have to master how to do a technique. And until you can master that, you're hopeless. Once you've mastered that to the point where it's natural, now it's when do I do that technique? And eventually it's why am I doing that technique? What's it accomplishing? And we go through this all the time. When you're a kid learning to walk, the first thing you've got to do is just figure out how to get your feet under you and not fall over all the time. Once you've got that under control, now it's, well, I want to walk over there for this reason. And you're slowly, you're building up to the point where the walking now is automatic. Now it's the, what am I trying to accomplish? The point where we're not thinking about walking anymore. We walk across the room to go do something. When Dancel is doing these dances, she has got all of these techniques that she's learned over the years. So she doesn't have to think, how do I spin like a black hole? She thinks, oh, He's got a black hole with stuff orbiting around it. I need to spin like a black hole now. And she just goes into it and does it. She's got another one. We didn't get video on this one. We did a story. I, I have a tie which has got a penguin on a moon of Jupiter. I swear that's what the tie is. It's, it's got to be <laughs> Jupiter's in the background. You can't see Jupiter in the background anywhere but a moon of Jupiter. And I was wearing that for the first time at a convention down in Dallas again. And, and, sometimes the audience just can't help giving themselves, give, giving me what's based on what they see with the tie, that they pretty much had that the story was a zookeeper for a traveling zoo with penguins on a moon of Jupiter that have gotten out and are causing trouble. And in the middle of this story, Dancel goes into her penguin dance, and I'm not going to even try to do it justice. But when she did the penguin dance, it, everyone just lost it. And afterwards, I talked to her and she said, oh yeah, we did the penguin dance for some ballet company 12 years ago and so on. So it was in her repertoire to do a penguin. <laughs> she just happened to be ready to do a penguin when I needed one. Now, if it had been something different from penguins, I don't know what else is in her repertoire. I can't say here that I'm necessarily working with a repertoire, but notice I had stocked my brain with bioregenerative life support systems. Um, <laughs> You, you, you folks really kind of made it way too easy for me because give me a space lab and zero G, I consider one of my goals in my fiction to be the best zero G fiction writer writing today. Why is that? I work hard. Just, it's something that I love. I love the near future, near space feel of being in zero gravity. And so my writer's the future winning story was a zero gravity story. I worked hard on that story so that every, even metaphors, people don't, things don't stand in place in that story. They float. There is nothing can possibly have a fixed sense of fixedness to it. So I rewrote whole metaphors so that everything felt like you were in zero G. So you kind of handed me my sweet spot. 
It's sort of like another time I did this at a smaller convention, they decided that the setting was going to be on Mars. Well, I've written about a dozen stories all based on a Mars base. So it was, no, oh, okay. I know where my setting is. I know where this is going on. So I don't exactly have a repertoire like Dan Sell does, but I sort of do, I've got just this whole list of stuff I've worked on before that I can pull in. Uh, when we did this last Thursday, what was last Thursday again? Uh, it was the scout ship with the filters going bad and so on. And the one before that, I don't remember which one, but I remember one that was saying, you know, oh, the time one, the time portal. I remember saying, you know, if any of you in the audience are, say, in your 40s or 50s and are reading classic time travel stories from back then, you're going to recognize all the stories I read because they're all coming out in this story that we are naturally the sum of our influences. So I don't have quite the repertoire sort of like Dan Sell does, but I've got all these influences built up. Um, Neil Gaiman actually in his master class used this metaphor. They said, your life is a compost heap. And you take all your leftovers and dump them in the compost heap and let them settle. And eventually you pull out rich compost to use to, to fertilize your stories. And so that's what I'm doing is I'm pulling from a lot of stuff from my compost heap to fertilize these story ideas. Other questions? Okay. All right. Now, because it's just the two of you this week, plus Irene who had to go, it's a really good chance of winning the free book. I am going to have <laughs> Any book that, I have, that I'm in on Amazon, I think my list of books that I'm in is now up to 60, one of the three of you is going to win, and we're going to let Amazon tell us the answer. We'll see if this works. My friend Russ does this all the time. I'd never tried this before. Alexa, give me a number between one and three. Your random number between one and three is one. All right, so one would be from my list, that would be Andy. So Andy, you can go to my Amazon page, pick any book you see there. If you want it signed and I have it in stock, I can mail you one. Or if you want paper or ebook or audible book, if it's available in audible, because not all of them are, just let me know and I will get it shipped to you. Oh, that's very generous, thank you. Thank you, I, I love having the audience for this. Um, I don't know if I'm going to keep doing it because my audience seems to be dwindling and I'm, I'm happy to do it, but we're starting to see diminishing returns here. I was hoping I would see a growing pattern and instead we had like, we had five and then we had four and now we've got three and I can, I can do enough math to see where that sequence is heading at some point here, <laughs> but we'll see. I'll, uh, if, I, if I feel up to it, we'll be doing it again Thursday night. Okay. So. All right, any other questions? All right, then Andy, let me know what you want for a book and I will see you all online. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shoemaker. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.